Alright everybody, I'm back with another video. This is going to be the video on how to make a jaw ringer, the winding of the coil. I have this fairly large ferrite rod. It's not that thick, like I said on my other previous video. This is the same exact rod. I have, like I said in the video, I have four of these. If you watched uh, the jaw ringer circuit video, I got them from um, eBay. They came from, I think, Ramonia, and uh, they didn't cost that much. It just took a little while, a little longer to get here. But uh, I'm gonna put that so I show you guys. And um, and I have this right here. It is. Hold on, let me add my light on here so you can see better. Uh, there we go. This is a. 28 gauge wire and uh, it's pretty I think it's pretty good he sold uh, laser saber said that uh, this is the type of wire that he used for his so I went ahead and bought me this size um, there's a lot of it on here I'm gonna go ahead and start winding up the, co the coil and everything for you guys just gonna fix this up a little bit anyway um what I'm gonna use is a little bit of this electrical tape go ahead and put this back on here real quick a little elastic rubber band that came with the wire so it won't move and uh what I'm gonna do let's go ahead and see the little piece of wire right here I don't know if you can see it. Lift this up just a little bit. See, I got that wire sticking out right there. I'm going to attach this wire to the end of this rod. You can see it right here. I'm going to go ahead and tape it. Go ahead and tape this up real fast. And, uh, anyway, I had tested out the jewel ringer circuit with a bunch of different lights, and, uh, I'm gonna do another video on, um, the high, these type of lights right here, like I said, I haven't done it yet, I don't know if you can see it, hold on, move this out the way real quick, this will be on the next, uh, video, not on this one, but I just want to give you a little, like, demonstration oh not demonstration but preview it's a halogen flood soft light it is a 50 um, watt at 12 volts and uh, I'll be doing that video probably today too but I'll just um, but that's gonna be on a separate video because I just really want you guys to see how I made the jewel ringer um, coil well, the transformer really like Joel Ringer said it's pr uh, Joel, I mean just like Laser Saber said it's pretty simple circuit and um, you don't have to do too much for it you just like he said you're just mounting it straight on the rod itself the only reason I'm putting this tape on here is so that way it won't move because it will that you want your um, coil to move you don't want your wire to move at all so if it does move then uh, you won't get accurate winding ratio basically like uh, your windings won't be exact because it's moving around so much you probably have less windings because it got unraveled a little bit you really want this to stay still. I'm trying to cut this piece of tape. Just give me a second. There we go. Rip that off. All right. 
there. <sighs> Anyway, it started off just like this. And we just start the windings. Now, it's, granted, it is a little off because it's not all the way at the tip of the core. Obviously, you can see the little indent. The core, the tip of this rod starts right about here. But I'm starting it probably like a fourth inch away from there. But that's perfectly fine. There's still plenty of wire and um, rod, so it's not like you definitely need all that. Now, it would be a little bit of a plus if you did, but I haven't figured out how to exactly to do it that way. I mean, I probably could use, like, hot glue or something like that, but I'm not really worried about it at the moment. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start winding the coil up and start showing you guys. Try to... Away from me a little bit. Uh, I got my camera on a kind of like a stand type thing. Anyway, I'm trying not to be in the way here. If you can see it, I'm gonna just zoom in on the core itself. Coil, I mean, itself. One second, let me just adjust this camera. I apologize. I'm trying to not move the camera around so much it's, nobody told me not to but it's just I just don't want it to move so much for you guys so I'm just trying to figure out how to get it to do right alright you see that right there already got two windings and then you just want to push up I have these together you want this really tight so uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and wind up probably about half all the way to the half I'm going to zoom out a little bit so sorry about that zoom out. anyway I'm going to wind up about half I'm going to cut out the video right now then you'll see about half and then I'll cut back on the video and put all this together for you uh, give me one second alright I'm back I decided to instead of using that half video like I said I was going to wind it up halfway I'm not going to do that I'm just going to show you guys exactly the how to wind it because that's what I pretty much promised you um, I have it set up in the crack of this table like the the my wire is set up in the crack of this table so it won't move anywhere only rotate while I'm pulling on the wire itself to wind on the ferrite rod now I'm starting at the end like I said I'm going to zoom in I, I zoomed out just to show you that the if I'm gonna zoom out a little more just to show you that uh, where my um, wire is but uh, plenty of people did other things like they have it have a stick inside the middle of the hole and have it sitting on in between something so it's easier for them to wind. I'm just using the crack of this table right here. It's simple. I don't have to worry about setting up anything. Anyway, I'm going to zoom in on this ferrite rod so you can see exactly. All right, start winding this up. I don't know if you can hear Family Guy in the background. It's my cousin watching Family Guy right now. Uh, like I said, just keep winding it and winding it. There we go. Like I said, now right now, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to try to zoom in just a little more. You could probably, if I could just zoom in, sorry about that, zoom out just a little bit. Now you see you got gaps right here inside of the windings. Try to get close enough so you can see. You got the gaps right there, you see that? And that's when you use your thumb or like your finger and you just want to kind of pull them close together. So you don't have to worry about all that. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. 
So it's, that way you don't have to worry about uh, the gaps. You just want to kind of push them all together. So be sure not to mess with your um, wire because you don't want it to unravel from the <coughs> from the wire spool. So I'm gonna keep going on this. And uh, just keep wrapping it. You want it real nice and put together. And just keep spinning it. And as you can see, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. You'll see the um, wire uh, spool just move while I'm... Like you see those two little holes in there, you'll see the wire spool moving because I'm pulling on it and winding this this coil up. And there go the holes. Um, but the uh, other, my first jewel ringer isn't um, the wire, The I guess this is the secondary wire, I think that's what he said, yeah. This is secondary wire that you're putting on. The primary wire is that thicker four gauge, uh, 14 gauge wire. This is a 28 gauge primary wire, I think. Right, that's what I said. Yeah, 28 gauge. Anyway, um, the 28 gauge is the one he recommend because it's thinner, and I think it has to do with since it's thinner, you could put more wire winding on it since it's not as thick as the one I was using on the other one. So I expect this one to be a little bit better than the, my first one, and my first one is pretty awesome by itself already. So anything better with something that you already made and that's good would be great, you know. So uh, I'm just gonna keep winding this wire up for you. This is basically how I did my other one, except for the first one. Like I said, it was that wire was already on a, a ferrite uh, magnet that I had, and um, I had to unravel it. And try to re rewinding, rewind it on the first ferrite rod. And uh, since I did that, the coil was pretty messed up. Like, uh, I mean, the wire was pretty messed up because of the winding. It's hard to wind something up and then try to unwind it and rewind it on something else because your wires start getting bent in places and it just isn't like a good thing to be doing, really, I guess because uh, my wire was kind of bent and you really don't want no cracks or anything like that you just want a complete strand no gaps inside of the um, ferrite rod so the whole rod from tip to tip you want it nice and tightly packed in with the you really don't want to see any of the ferrite rod you just want to see straight wire on there <clears throat> but um, like I said I'm just making this I'm winding up the wire right now and uh, I'm gonna cut out the video again and so I get halfway I just wanted to show you how I was winding it up and you see already it's doing pretty well I'm gonna zoom in real quick so you guys can see that you really don't want no gaps and I'm pretty much not having any gaps in here because gaps means less wire on there and then if you have less wire that means you're not getting as you're not getting the best out of your ferrite uh, jewel ringer transformer so uh, anyway I'm gonna go pause the video now. I mean, stop this, and then I'll bring it back in as soon as I get like halfway. And uh, then after that, I'll pause it again probably, and then fin show you the finishing of the primary, and then I'll start on my sec. I mean, my secondary, and then I'll start on the secondary at 14 gauge. All right, I'll be right back. All right, people, I'm back, and uh, as you could plainly see. Let me zoom out here. Well, I'm going to zoom in in a second, but as you can see, I have pretty much halfway done with this rod. You see how long it is? Hold on. There we go. And uh, I'm halfway done with it. I'm going to zoom in and show you how well I'm doing this because uh, I'm very pleased with it. Now you can see, obviously see there is no gaps inside of this rod, this rod right now. None whatsoever. That is a perfect transformer um, winding. Look at that. That's just great. I really am pleased at how well I'm doing this right now. And uh, like I said, I was just going to show you guys 
the um, halfway through. This is exactly how you want to do it. Like I said, the more wire, the better. So the more windings, the better. Now the front here has a little bit um, gap, but that's perfectly fine. As long as most of it is completely wind up perfectly, and that is exactly what I'm doing right now. Anyway, I'm going to cut the video out now, and then I'll cut back in once I'm close to the end, and then I'll show you how to finish it off the secondary wire and how to start on the primary. Alright. Alright, I'm back. I'm getting close to the finish. I just wanted to point out something. How I'm doing it exactly is when I'm winding them up, I wind in a spacing. Like, I wind the spacings like this. As you can see, I'm going to zoom in right now. You see how it's spaced out in between each other? And all I do is push. Like, I use my fingers and kind of push them all close together. So, I'm going to show you that right now. If you can see it, uh, I'm trying to see how it pushes it close just like that. You just want it all tight together. See? Perfect. Then you just kind of twist around there to make it even real tighter. So, now it's nice and tight. You have nothing to worry about. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. Now you can see perfectly, there's no gaps, no nothing. Alright, I'm almost like you can see, the end of the rod is right here. I have probably another like 10 minutes worth of winding, and then I'll cut back in in a second after 10 minutes and um, go ahead and show you everything. Uh, show you how to finish off this primary, I mean the secondary, and then start on the primary. Alright, I'm back. I'm getting close to the finish. Um, I'm just showing you exactly how, how I'm doing it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You can see all this right here is the magnet wire, and this is the rest of the core. And uh, zoom in on that. You can see I'm winding it really well. You see this. You'll know how well you're winding it once you start making your own. Um, it's doing well, real well as long as you can't see none of the ferrite rod underneath. You're really, you're doing great. Um, so basically I'm just going to keep winding up the next few minutes, talk about it a little bit. Um, it's pretty easy and well, and um, it's pretty easy to do. You don't have to worry about putting, that's the good thing about this, you don't have to worry about putting any tape or any kind of blocking on here for the, because uh, you know, like some cores you probably have to put like some like electrical tape to block it from shorting out or whatever but since this is in metal you're all, you're okay you don't have to worry about it that's why you could wind it directly onto the ferrite rod there's no shorting out there's no uh, sparks that will fly or anything like that no hazardous stuff on here to mess up your transformer it's kind of like uh, any other transformer for the most part, if you think about it, if you use like a, if you know anything about transformers when it comes to a, not the movie, but uh, when it comes to like a transformer, the um, they have ferrite like bracket discs, like L shapes and all kinds of different ones that go in between, like inside of a core of wire, so it goes like in here, and then the wire is always on top of it. And uh, they use a, they use a lot of cores for pretty much everything electronic, like motors for sure, and uh, just a bunch of different things. I'm pretty sure TV TV sets have little um, core uh, and uh, transformers in it. Uh, it's all about they all help boost electricity and voltage, and with capacitors help smooth out the voltage to make sure it's just an even amount. And there's no irregularities, like uh, cause you know house power is uh, AC, and that means um, alternating current, and uh, everything that we everything after AC is DC, and that's direct current, and direct current is a uh, constant, like a, the same voltage always stays the same. AC fluctuates. You could have uh, say you need to run. Uh, 12 volts and it may go 12 volt like a uh, matter of fact basically like house power um, AC house power is AC so like you have a, a house outlet and the house outlet is uh, 110 to 120 and what that means you could run 
any appliance off of that, like TVs that uses 110 volts, and it'll fluctuate to using 110 volts instead of using 120. But uh, DC doesn't do that. It stays. So like, if you needed 120 volts, it will stay exactly 120 volts, even if you're using 110. So that doesn't work out. So uh, anyway, uh, so there's a lot of electronics that uses uh, transformers and capacitors and stuff like that. And uh, I got into capacitors too, and I will be showing videos on capacitors. And uh, thanks to uh, Laser Saber, thanks to Laser Saber, he uh, showed uh, how he did some of his capacitors and uh, a capacitor balancing circuit. And I made that too for my capacitor bank. Uh, capacitor is basically kind of like batteries, but they're way better than a battery because they're not chemical used. It's all elect electricity. It's like a capacitor st grabs electricity, stores it, and then releases it. That's what's called a charge and discharge. So uh, since capacitors charge and discharge, they do it very at a very fast rate. So uh, instead of charging a um, instead of charging a battery at like a car battery charges like if you had a dead car battery and you hooked up a car battery charger that charges like 10 amps and it takes about 30 minutes to an hour a capacitor bank that uses 12 volts would charge within a few seconds because of their fast abilities of their, of their fast charge rate capacity and it stores a lot too they have a, they have a large storage capacity too for um, amperage and stuff and uh, especially super capacitors and uh, ultra capacitors there's all different types of capacitors out here and um, the smaller ones that hold like hundreds of voltage like 400 130 and stuff like that and they do start they do charge at a very high rate and uh, capacitors are um, and stun guns and all kind of things uh, that's why like you get a you get a stun gun there, there will be a capacitor inside there somewhere and uh, that's what store, stores all that electricity and that's what releases that's the stun gun that discharge is the, the that stun gun button that releases the electricity that's the dis discharge of the capacitor so like when you plug up your uh, stun gun or your taser gun whatever you want or a taser um, that that release of electricity that go flows through that you can see that's coming from the capacitor itself and uh, that button is just to release it basically and uh, yeah I got into capacitors and basically I'm trying to I'm trying to get towards free energy because you know everybody hates light bill and you know free energy saves the world and as we all know we're pretty much destroying most of the planet with uh, fossil fuels and all that good stuff and uh, you know I want my son to be around long enough to have his own children and stuff and the way the planet is looking and with all these wars and stuff it's always usually something about energy or some kind of destructive force like weapon of mass destruction and stuff and we just I just feel like there's just too much violence on, on the planet and uh, fr I feel like free energy will help clear most of that those arguments and violence up so uh, just always one step closer to getting that free energy and I guarantee hoping someday I achieve it I really want it to be someday soon but I can't guarantee nothing like that at the moment because I'm still doing plenty of research this is all independent work it's not like I go to college or school or anything like that I mean I graduated high school but since then I've just you know I had a kid and I just don't really have the time to go to school like I want to and money situation and whatever so any other, any extra money I do get I just fund my own little projects like this and uh, I feel like I'm very smart when it comes to uh, any kind of like computer based or circuitry and stuff like that because I've been working with computers since I was like 
2005, I think I had my first computer when I was like 8. And, uh, I just been, I mean, when I first, my first computer my grandmother bought me and, uh, I was just doing programs like Word, pro uh, PowerPoint presentations and stuff like that. And, but, uh, then when I turned 14, it was around my fa when my father passed away and, uh, I needed something to keep me preoccupied so I didn't have to think about it so much. And um, my friend Jesse, he was into building computers like from scratch, so he started teaching me some things and then I kind of just went on from there and then I had a computer class in, in high school before I got out of high school. It was uh, computer, repl computer repair, I guess, and uh, I learned I already knew all the stuff in the class before I got to the class, but I just didn't know all the names for them, like for the parts and stuff that I was using. I knew how to put everything together, I just didn't know what the names of the stuff was, like six pin, mini den, and stuff like that. And, um, uh, like, uh, you know, a VJ output and all that type of stuff, but I know now, like, I just didn't know the names of all the components before until I got into high school. And, uh, sorry about that. One second. Anyway, um, like I was saying, uh, yeah, so after I got in, got with my friend Jesse, and he showed me a lot of stuff, and then got into uh, the, that class in high school, I just learned about all the names of computer parts and stuff, and then after I got out of high school, I started um, doing these projects that I just see everything as a puzzle. Like, I feel like it's a gift from God, but really, like, how I know all this stuff, because people always come by and tell me, like, how do you know how to do all this stuff? Like, where does all this come from? And I just, I don't really know. I just know that everything out here just seems like a puzzle to me and like all these people all these people out here like companies and stuff have real good pro um, uh, projects and uh, products for like computer based stuff and they just I feel like if they was to a lot of these companies were to get together they can make something amazing so instead of them getting together I just buy their products and put it together myself it's kinda like a I think it's called a fabrication like I said on one of my other videos but, uh, like I said, I haven't had the time to look up that word yet. I'll do it in a little bit, but, uh, I have a lot of these projects that I do, but they're from, they're basically products from other companies and, uh, stuff that I bought offline from other people and stuff, and, uh, I put them together into one thing. So, like, uh, like I got a project that I'm working on other than this. I have plenty of projects. I got, like, three, three or four of them that I, I usually work on at a time. Like, this one is probably my second project. My first project was the free power and uh, using an alternator and motors and all kind of stuff like that, trying to produce some kind of free electricity. And uh, this one is part of that. See, like, my projects consist of parts, basically. So, like, I do free energy will have, like, five, six different parts. Like, uh, this could go with, like, how this works with lights. That would be good for free energy. So free energy with this with the light um with the alternator the alternator charges up a battery and the battery uses the lights you know it's all different parts but it all consists of one overall project but uh, i have this one side project that i like doing it's called got um i call it my gauntlet series uh when i was doing um halloween costume i did this halloween costume of uh Nightwing, he used to be Robin as from Batman and Robin, but when he split off from Robin, he, uh, I mean, when he split off from Batman and started doing his own stuff, um, he turned into Nightwing, and uh, I made a Nightwing costume for, uh, for, uh, Halloween, and it was a fully functional costume, like, uh, I had a helmet that I'm selling right now on eBay that's, uh, a video gaming helmet, and you can see everything out of it has um, video glasses built in from Buzix Corporation it's called the Rap 1200 and uh, it it works really well it shows in 720p while I have the 
while I have the um, glasses on, you can see everything um, through a web a webcam off the top of the face of the helmet. So anything the front of the helmet sees, you can see inside the glasses. So your eyes could be completely um, covered up with the helmet, and you can still see in front of you. And uh, you can still play <coughs> video games, watch movies. It has Bluetooth headphones built in. It's a real. It was a real good project. I was really happy with it. And it worked real well. And uh, then I had a. Uh, but anyway, I started this um, Gauntlet series, and I was inspired by Iron Man, obviously, because he had all that, you know, iron armor and iron armor stuff. And um, I met, I made this Gauntlet for it for this costume that I could put my cell phone into, and it could move with servos and function uh, with a servo tester and it was it was pretty good I, I'm gonna make a video on that too because I will be selling that soon I won't sell this for as much as I'm selling the helmet right now and hopefully I get somebody to bid on this helmet I had a few people talk to me about it on eBay but nobody has bid it on it yet it's on an auction and uh, but anyway like I was saying um, right now my last gauntlet I made three of these gauntlets that work like functioning gauntlets well two right now I'm on my third one and uh, this third one will be able to do a whole bunch of stuff it's gonna be able to turn on my computer remotely from a long distance using an RF uh, transceiver and uh, receiver and um, it'll be able to turn on a, my room light with a I think it's a RF receiver and transmitter too I got that coming in the mail. Hopefully, if not today, it will be Monday because it's about to hit the weekend. And uh, and then um, it will be able to show me the time, the date on this on the gauntlet I'm talking about. It will be able to show the time, the date, and uh, it will be able to uh, show you text messages, Facebook messages, when people call you because I have this other... Um, I have the Sony's uh, Ericsson Live View that's going to be attached to it. There's going to be a whole bunch of different things attached to this one um, little gauntlet thing, and it's it's going to look pretty badass. I'm gonna <coughs> my favorite colors is red and black, so it's going to be a red and black. It's going to look real nice. It has it'll have a little LED light on the front for when you turn on the computer, like when you press the computer on off switch, and uh. So like I said, it's going to be able to turn on my computer, it'll be able to turn on the, my room light inside my, inside my room, it'll be able to uh, tell me the date, time, it'll tell me text messages, Facebook messages, when somebody's calling me on my cell phone, um, and, I, and, and it has a remote control that controls my computer's uh, playback, I guess, it has a it's a multi, it's a Bluetooth multimedia um, controller. It's like a little Bluetooth remote control that lets you pause, play movies, and um, music. It'll bring up my web browser with a press of a button. It's a real, it's gonna be a real nice little nifty uh, gadget that I'm coming up with. And uh, I think everybody would like it. And if everybody does like it. And like tells me that they want one. I won't mind. I wouldn't mind building some extra ones because the parts ain't really that expensive. And really, I'll probably just be charging you for for the parts for it. And uh, if you look on my other videos, you will see the that remote that I was talking about that controls <coughs> uh, my computer and everything. It's a uh, I forgot the name of it. It starts with an S. It's like it looks like satellite or something on there. I think, but um, anyway, it's a Bluetooth remote control for the computer. You'll you'll probably see it on one of my other videos. All you have to do is just look through them, and uh, it. But it's it 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 works really well, and it works from a distance. Like I was in my I like I, what I like to do when I'm taking a shower and stuff. I'll bring my stereo my little stereo speaker inside the bathroom with me, while so I can listen to music while I take a shower. And whenever I feel like changing the track, all I have to do is just press that button on that remote control, and it changes the track while I'm inside the bathroom. And it, so it has a good amount of distance on it. And uh, 
I will be uh, adding a different Bluetooth um, USB um, toggle or dongle, whatever you want to call it, so I can have a greater distance than that, so I could be able to use it pretty much all the way around the house. And uh, but like I said, it works pretty well, and I will be doing videos on that soon. And but anyway, back to this. You know, I don't want to get too carried off subject. I'm almost done, as you can see. I got this little bit left. Hold on, let me show you. I got so hard to see. There you go. I have this little bit left right here, and then I'm gonna show you exactly how uh, to tape it off and do everything you need to. I'm just trying to get as close as I can since I already took off a lot from the front of this because of taping it off. That's a good thing. It doesn't matter too much about the front how much you don't use the ferrite rod, as long as you try not to use so less at the end of it. So. Uh, so that would kind of compensate. You don't want to have less and less and less. You want to try to use up the, as much as the rod as possible. And uh, so that way you could get it all hooked up right. And you can use, like I said, the more wire and the more of the ferrite rod you have, the better and more lights you could hook up to, to your circuit. So right now I'm using for this light out here. Like uh, that light out this way that's coming that's coming in here. Um, that's that LED that I said on the other videos that I like so much. And uh, I'm sorry for anyway, um, like I said, that that's that LED light that I was telling you guys about, and you see obviously how bright it is because I don't even have my camera light on at the moment. A matter of fact, I'll go ahead and. I don't think I could turn it on yet. Um, anyway, that's that one LED, and it's, that's just running off house power right now. I don't have it hooked up to anything, but you see how bright it is. And uh, that's pretty much as bright as it'll get, obviously, if it's hooked up to the house power. And I had, had I did have it that bright on the other on the other video for um, for the Super Jewel Ringer circuit, and it was running at high. Uh, it was running at a very low uh, voltage, right? Uh, I think it was 12 volts, if I'm accurate, if I remember correctly. And um, anyway, uh, like I was saying, it was running at 12 volts. It was hardly using any watts or any amps, and that's good because obviously, house power, um, any. Uh, any power company, that's what I'm trying to say here, um, measures how much wattage you use for when they're billing you. So if you're not using any watts out of your uh, out of your lights, you're not using any lights really. So you don't really have to worry about a light bill anymore. So uh, that'll be a good thing for you. I mean, obviously. Uh, you can't hook up LEDs into your TV and run them off 12 volts or whatever. That's not going to happen. So obviously you will be charged for using your TV and stuff. But if you're not you if you're not charged for using your lights, then you know that's all the better for you. If, I mean, I don't know what you're running in your house. That's all on you. But if you uh, basically what I'm trying to say is if you had all your lights running off of the this jewel ringer circuit in your house running those LEDs that uses no watts, you won't be using any energy and you won't have a light bill. It's, that's, I mean, don't quote me on that or tell me that I'm, you know, I mean, I'm just, that's just a theory of mine, I guess, if you want to call it that. Because, uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh let's not do that. Well, yeah, that's just a theory of mine. Anyway, um, that yeah, that's my theory on that. If, cause I mean, like I said, power companies measure how much watch you use for your house. So if you're not really using, if your LED, if you have a a meter that tells you how many watts you use and it shows that you're not using any, then obviously you're not using any, like how I showed you in the other video. 
So, uh, <coughs> if you're not using none, then you're not using electricity in their eyes, I guess. I don't really know. But either way, you would definitely diminish your light bill substantially. You won't really have used any kind of electricity, so your light bill would drop dramatically and you won't really have much of a light bill to pay for. I'm not saying that I'm poor and I'm trying to find the poor man's way out, but if you don't have to spend money on something, why would you do it? I mean, obviously nobody likes having to pay money for a freaking light bill. Everybody hates those damn light bills. I'm pretty sure even light companies hate giving out bills, to be honest. I heard, like, if you hook up your house with solar panels, they start the light company starts paying you. So, uh, that'll be an interesting thing for them to do, you know, if I tell them I made something sort of like that, and they start paying me money for not having to use so much electricity because you know right now that's a terrible part they only do stuff for when stuff starts to get so bad I'm gonna use different tape now that I'm done with this I have just finished it I'm gonna use this different tape this is three millimeter I love this type of tape it's the vinyl three millimeter let me just turn it around so you guys can see better yes three millimeter Final electrical tape. This is some good tape, quality tape right here. And uh, I'm gonna open that up in a second. And uh, go ahead and tape that all up. And I'm going to cut this off, this wire, as you can see, that's sticking out. So now you're done. This is the first, uh, this is your secondary wire. You're done with this completely. You go ahead and cut it off. It's not cutting. This stuff doesn't work all that well. Uh, here we go. Pair of scissors. There we go. And I'm done with that. You don't need to use any more of that wire unless you're making a second or third one or whatever. Which way is the sticky side? So you touch it. Alright, I'm going to tape this off, as you can see. I'm going to zoom out and uh, show you that I'm just taping off this top layer right here. You don't have to tape the whole entire rod or anything like that. Um, I'm going to cut this, and there you have it. That is your first wire. This is your, um, like I was trying to tell you before, this is your first wire and uh, your basically this is your secondary wire. Now it's the first wire you put on, but this is called your secondary wire. Anyway, um, I do have the windings ratio. It doesn't you don't know exactly how many is on here because uh, you just all you do is you put them all to you put them all together, but you're not gonna know exactly how many of the windings you did because I know other people like a lot of people do uh, they'll tell you how many um, turns of wire is around something but you're not gonna know about your rod because you just want to do it from tip to tip so uh, at least that's what um, laser saber said and it makes perfect sense I mean like you said you just want to try to use up the whole entire rod and uh, if you're using up the whole rod you're not gonna know you're not going to know how many windings it is because not every rod is the same exact size or anything like that. So, uh, and it's not like you're making like a Bandini circuit or anything. 
or a Bendini motor, or post motor thing. So uh, it doesn't really matter how many. It matters how many windings, but you're not gonna know the exact winding ratio. What you're gonna do? I'm I'm just putting a piece of tape on this tip part right here. You don't really have to. I just want to do it so that way I don't have to worry about my wire being pulled or moved around or anything like that. And then I'll just tape that up again. So I ain't got. I just really don't want to worry about this moving this this wire right here moving anywhere or being pulled. So what I'm gonna do is tighten this up and. Uh, with one more piece of tape so I don't have to worry about uh, it coming loose because you just really don't want your wire coming loose at all just because um, obviously if it comes loose then you're pretty much diminishing how much windings is on your ferrite rod and you don't want that happening at all that's why you made the wire that's why you made them nice and tight and, hum and close together so you don't have to worry about something like that and put one more piece of tape right there all right, and now I'm just gonna cut this, and uh, there you have it, folks. That's your first winding of the ferrite uh, rod on your for your transformer for your Joel Ringer circuit. As you can see, you got uh, one wire coming out the end and one wire coming out this end, and you can see very well. There is not a single gap inside of this. I made mine with green wire. The other one, that my first one was made with red wire. Doesn't matter what color it is, as long as it's magnet wire and it's and this one right here is 28 gauge. Sorry about that. My phone keeps going off. It's a stupid alarm clock. Anyway, um, like I was saying, it doesn't matter uh, what color it is. Uh, like I said, this one right here is 28 gauge. It matters about how small and how thick it is, though. Um, I think in the smaller, the better, because the other one I used, I think, was a 24. Or, um, I think it was 24 gauge on the first transformer that I built. But, um, I mean, first jewel ringer I built. And uh, this one right here is a 28 gauge. And that's the one that, uh, like I said, uh, that Laser Saber suggested for his. And, uh, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to show you my uh, other wire, the 14 gauge. I got this 14 gauge from Lowe's, as you can see. Let me just bring them, this up a little bit. 14 gauge wire from Lowe's. And uh, it's 20 foot primary wire. Is You just want that one single strand. Oh man, this ain't it. This isn't it. I'm sorry. I bought the wrong wire. But it doesn't matter. Um, I do have the other wire somewhere around here. I just have to look for it. Give me one second. Alright. Now that I got this, like I said, I did have some 14 gauge uh, wire. Let me show you. I do have 14 gauge wire. Um, see, it's just one single strand. The one I bought from Lowe's isn't one single strand, so it's not good enough. But, uh, this, uh, strand right here is one single strand. That's what's going to be best for this. Anyway, I'm going to tape this to here. This is the first end of the same core, uh, of the same magnet wire I just made right here. See, it's all green. Looks nice. Very tightly packed in there. Anyway, um, I'm going to tape this onto here. And then I'm going to start my windings up. And you want to start, you want to do the windings, I think it's the same exact way. So whatever turns you were doing it, if you're going left or right, you just want to keep doing it the same exact way. That's how I did mine, and I think that's how Laser Saber did his. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook that up for you guys. I'm going to just go ahead and tape this up real quick, and I'll be right back. Alright, I got that all taped up for you. And uh, I'm trying to turn on my light. If I could just press that button real quick. I'm sorry about this. Where is it? There it goes.
There we go. Anyway, now that you can see it pretty clear that I got my uh, tape all around there. It's attached. You kind of want them separated from each other, obviously. You don't want them connecting. <clears throat> and then how you start this, you just kind of bend it all the way around this. Now this wire is way harder to get wrapped around this rod. Oh, at, at, actually it probably be way harder to wrap around any rod. It has a very, it's really tough and it doesn't like to work with you like any other thin wire because it's so thick. So um, what I'm going to do, zoom out here, back up a little bit. Go ahead and try to wind it up as best I can for you while you watch. If I can't really do it the way, uh, okay. sorry about all that. Let me just try here. So, uh, like I was doing, I was winding it, uh, I guess, counterclockwise. So, I'm going to try to keep winding it counterclockwise. And, uh, so let me go ahead and start doing that. Bend this around here, like so. So thick and hard to mess with. I'm sorry about this. I'm trying to show. I do all this real quick. Um, you see how it's just now going around there, but it's just so hard to mess with right now. And this is the one that you will have trouble with. I guarantee you'll have trouble with this, but uh, it's not that bad. Like uh, you could use regular wire if you want like strands of wire like you know you have one wire one coating of this stuff but it, it has more than just one strand of wire but um laser saber said it will be best not to do that because this is a better way you want to have the thicker wire on there just that one strand so uh, i'm just gonna go what he said and it seems like it worked because obviously my jewel ringer circuit worked out and I uh, did it the same exact way he did. You always want to, if you're copying somebody, if you know exactly what you're doing, then yeah, you could change and do whatever the heck you want to do. But um, if you're not really sure about how you're doing something, it's just best to copy exactly what the person's doing if they're showing you step by step. Anyway, I already got two wraps around there, as you can see. Going on my third one, I'll go ahead and uh, pause the video now, and then I'm going to go ahead and get to the middle of this um, transformer, and uh, as soon as I'm done with that, I'll come back on and uh, show you guys um, and let you get some more tips on how I'm doing it, and if I found out a better way to get it wrapped around there. But for the most part, it looks like it's just, you know, you bend it upward into the next, like you, you're just kind of bending upward, like as close as you could get to the first um, wrap around it. So like, uh, you see my first two, I just kind of bend this wire up into this, not over it, but just pushing it up against it. So kind of keep it nice and tight. So you have your a better, uh, like closeness because you just really want it close and tight nice to each other but all right i'm gonna cut out the video and i'll cut back on when i'm halfway done all right i'm halfway in well a little more than halfway i should say i don't know as soon as i kind of press this up a little bit now the crappy part is i was uh winding this right here the tension kind of pushed the tape off of the end of this ferrite rod you're gonna have to watch out for that because you don't want it pulling that one secondary wire that we just put on there so the good thing is that's why I left that little bit of a gap between the for the um, front of this rod remember you seen that little bit of gap it was like a fourth of an inch I think um, so with me pulling while with it pushing off of there
It didn't do so bad, it didn't unravel my whole thing or anything like that, it didn't really do much of anything. So that kind of like, that was like a safety net for that. But um, now that it's kind of loose, I gotta make sure when I'm winding it, it, the rest of it, I don't have to really worry about it being all the tension anymore. So I'm gonna cut this out and then um, I'm gonna finish up the rest of the winding and then tape it up and then I'll hook it up to a transistor and hook up the power and see what we get out of this. All right. All right, I finally got the last bit of this jewel for, um, transformer done, the jewel ringer transformer. I had a bit of a setback. I had to unwind the front a little bit because the wire came out of there and it messed it up a little bit. But so I'm guessing from like right here is where the winding is a little messed up. Like from right there is where it got loose and like messed up. Underneath here, what I'm trying to say, and for the uh, secondary, that green wire I was wrapping. So probably like right about here. I mean, it's not that bad. You still got all this. It's still pr it's fine. Nothing wrong with it. I'm going to go ahead and do some testing on it. And uh, I'm gonna, first, let me hook up. Uh, this is my little setup. See my first jewel ringers right over there. This is my power supply. It uses 16 volts like I showed in the other video. I'm going to hook all this up. And then I'll go ahead and hook this transformer up and get it to see if I can get it to do something. I'll be back in just a second. Anyway, I got this power supply hooked up. Uh, you can't really see it with this book, but uh, I got the power supply over here. Zoom out. And then it goes from those wires to this little power adjuster from 16 volts down. Goes straight into this amp meter reader. And it's 11.12 uh, right now, and it goes off to my collector and everything, my uh, tran uh, transistor, and then it goes into this old jewel ringer right here, the first one I made. I just want to make sure that it was hooked up right, and uh, I got this light shining off of that. And this light right here is straight off of my uh, power, uh, house power, but this one right here, as you can apparently see, is hooked up to the transistor and that part, that black wire, is going straight to my trans uh, transformer. And uh, I'm gonna do cut the video out, that's just to show you, and then I'm gonna switch these two tra transformers, the new one, with the old one, as you can see right here. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna go ahead and switch everything around. As you can still see, I have 11.9 one volts and uh, less than half an amp. Let me shut off the light so you can see it better. There we go. It's hard to see a little bit here and there, but you see the watt per hour. And it's using 4.5, so four and a half watts right now just for this LED. That's one single LED, but this isn't. <coughs> That's still my first one. I'm going to go ahead and switch over and get this one set up right now. Um, I had to get my power cord for my camera because my camera was going dead. But I'm going to go ahead and just switch everything right now. So, uh, let's go ahead and grab these wires off of here so that you guys can all see. And see that came off of there. Switch that off. I'm gonna go ahead and move this. You can see that little wire? Oh no, hold on. Let me get my light on there. Zoom in a little bit. See that little green wire right there? Go ahead and switch this red wire off this black one. Go ahead and hook that green one up. Pull this a little bit. Alright. Go ahead and hook this up. Mm -hmm. 
Zoom out. Alright, that's connected. As you can see. Green wire. It's kind of hard to see it. It's right here. There you go. You can kind of sort of see it. Anyway, now I just got to switch these last ones real quick. So this yellow one will be hooked to that top part. Bend this down a little bit. Alright, let's go ahead and finish this off. Alright, now I got this last wire to hook up. Right now, it's not doing anything. Uh, I don't know. It's not working. So, in the video, he did say that. You could switch things around to get your circuit to turn on. So I'm going to go ahead and try that out. I'm really hoping I didn't burn my transistor though. Because sometimes you could blow your, you could mess up your transistor. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to, I'm going to switch these over. Still not doing anything. I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. Uh, no. Hold on. Alright everybody, I'm back. And uh, I had to cut the video out because so I was having some kind of trouble. I didn't, I don't exactly know what's going on. But um. I thought I blew out my transistor, but I didn't. For some reason, it wasn't coming on. When I plugged it up, the second one, I had to mess with it a little bit, but it is, as you can see, working. Um, but if I move it, for some reason, it loses its connection. I'm not too sure why, but watch as I move it. Ready? Let me zoom and come out a little bit. Oh, well, now it's not doing it. I guess it got used to it. I have no idea. But it was cutting off. I'm not sure why. But uh, now I got two transformer, uh, jewel ringer, um, ferrite rod transformer things. And since I thought I blew out my transistor, I went ahead and bought some more from Radio Shack. So I will be able to hook up two now. And as you can see, this one's set at a lower. Um, this one right here is set at a lower voltage rate at 8.8. Eight nine, and look how bright that light is. That's just eight volts of electric, uh, almost nine volts of electricity, and uh, it's working out very well. I think uh, I think that was key to uh, the windings for the uh, the different type of wires. Like I said, you see this? The first one, that red wire, is a 24 gauge, I think, and this one right here. This green wire, if you, I don't know if you can really see it, it's real small right there. That green wire is that 28 gauge I was talking about. And since this is that 28 gauge is thinner, I have more windings on this one than I do on the first one. And I think that's why this one's real bright at such a low voltage rate. Because this brightness right here is as is, is bright as a 12. Uh, let's just put it this way. That first one. Well, the, the brightness of this right here for the first one to get that bright you have to probably put it about 12 volts so I'm already down about 3 and it's showing just that bright for the second one I'm down 3 volts and it's just uh, that bright so uh, I'm very pleased with it I actually made it work great and I'm glad you guys uh, 
were uh, able to watch everything and if you have any comments or uh, questions just ask um, I thought I blew out this trans uh, transistor like I said but I didn't I'm gonna go ahead and raise the voltage just to see what it does how bright I could get it and put it up to let me see what 12 volts will do I'm very pleased with this. It looks like it's working pretty well. It's very bright. This that's that LED light that, that's running off the house power. But I'm about to cut that off so you guys can see the um the power of it. I'm showing you the wattage and everything it's using. I'm not sure what this LED light this this is a LED light too. That one right here. Oh good. This one right here is a LED. But I'm not sure um, about uh, what watts it uses and all that. Well, you see how bright it just got, and that's what ten. That just hit ten volts, and it just it just got even brighter. I'll go ahead and put it up to twelve volts and see what that does. And now you can hear it. The jewel ringer is ringing. I don't know how well you can hear it. some reason it's pausing. You see how the light's flickering? It's ringing but it makes a flicker noise. I guess the more voltage it gets the more the light will flicker. It's like pulsing electricity. I just hit uh, 12 volts. It's 5.7 or 5.6, 5.7 watts. It seems to be doing just fine now. It stopped flickering. I don't know why it started flickering around uh, 11 and a half volts, but look how bright that light is. And we're just using about five and a half watts basically, and it's only using 12 volts of electricity, and that light is very bright and like I said you can hear the circuit it is ringing that is the jewel ringer but for it not to ring it won't be that bright but I could bring it down I think it's 11 volts is as high as I could get it without you see how I brought it down now it's starting to make that noise I'm bringing it down more bring it down It's got a silent hum. I'm going to bring it down just a little more so I won't even hear that. Let me, give me a second. Ten volts is that? Now here, I still hear the the hum, but it's not loud. And it's using exactly five watts of electricity at ten volts. And look how bright that light is. I gotta say, I'm very pleased with this. And uh, like I said on the video, I am going to uh, post this, and you guys just let me know what you think. I've done the whole setup for you guys. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have that many questions just because, I mean, this ferrite rod right here is the one I started off with. I showed you the rod first. I showed you what wire I was using. I showed you how to wind it, how to put it together, how to wind the sec the primary wire, that top red wire that you see right now. You can see that you can you still see some gaps. You see that green in there. You'll still see, let me zoom out just a little bit, you still will see some gaps. The, that green right there is um, the secondary wire. As you could plain, plainly see, that is the secondary wire. But uh, I showed you from start to finish and how to hook it up to your transistor. Well, I didn't exactly show you how to hook it up to your transistor. So let me just show you where I got it hooked to so that you guys will know. Okay, I got this black wire running straight 
to the lamp. You can see it's on the second prong right there. The, the positive prong, I guess, if you want to call it that. All right, I'm going to zoom out. And then I got this yellow wire going straight to the bottom of your emitter. Now you see it's flipped upside down where, okay, you see, that's the best way for me to explain. I'm going to show you this other one. Okay, now you want it, the way I got it set up, you see how you have the prongs on the bottom? They, they kinda, they're not actually in the middle of this transistor. They're a little below the center. So what you'll do, you want that top, you want that to be higher. So you want that <coughs> close to the top. So you'll have to flip it upside down. So uh, you'll see on the side it's the N23005. And uh, you'll just have to have that flipped upside down. So you don't want them sitting lower. You want them towards the top. So uh, anyway, so off of the end of this one, I got the uh, yellow going straight to the bottom. That's the base. I'm not. I forget which one is the emitter and the collector on the prongs, but um, the base is just that, the base of the transmitter. So uh, the green base goes straight to the um, light too. So uh, that's the other prong, the other side of the light bulb. So, uh, and then that green wire, I had it soldered just so I could extend it so I didn't have to worry about nothing, but it goes into this black alligator clip. And then that one will go straight to your, pot, your negative on the, um, on your battery. And then the positive on your battery will go to the other end of your primary. And uh, sometimes you'll have to flip the connections. Uh, that's what Laser Saber was telling you. You know, sometimes uh, the circuit may not turn on and the best thing to do is just flip your connections. Like, that's one of the reasons why this one wasn't turning on because um, I had it set up just like how I did on the first one. And the first one... Uh, I had the positive, the red positive from the battery terminal over on this side, and this yellow one was over on the other side, right over there, on that red wire. So uh, what I did, I just flipped it, and he said you don't even have to flip the pot. You, um, he said you don't have to flip the primary wire. You could switch the secondary wire around to see if that works too. So I could have just flipped the yellow, the um, white wire with that black wire over there on the other side, and that may have would that may have would have triggered the circuit as well. So there's a number of ways to do this. It's just all about the winding ratio and uh, how you got your circuit set up. So if you don't have it working, don't get discouraged because you, it may just be a, something real simple. I mean, I was getting discouraged. I, I keep thinking I'm blowing my transistors, which I'm not, I'm guessing. I think I blew one for sure because I heard one pop, the first one I was trying to make, like I said on the other video. But I thought I was just blew that one over there, but I didn't. But, um, so that, that worked out great. I, I just bought some transistors. I would, I would, I'm not even going to say I bought them for no reason because I'm going to wind up using them. But, uh, I didn't really need to buy them right now. I thought, I thought I was, I thought I needed it because I thought I blew this one but I didn't so but um anyway like I said just to recap let me just show you one more time because the setup is you know I got wires all over the place I just want you to follow along here um that black wire you'll see running all the way to the light the positive on the light um basically the power plug of the light and then that green one off the light goes to the base of your emitter, the top part of the base. And then uh, that yellow wire goes straight to the bottom of your emitter. I mean your transistor, I'm sorry, the base of your transistor. So the green one goes to the top base of your transistor. The yellow one is going to the bottom base of the transistor and that's off the primary wire. The secondary black goes to the light bulb. The primary, 
that's yellow is going to the ba um, base, the bottom base of the emitter. I mean the transistor. I'm sorry. The positive off the battery terminal is going down to the um, other end of your primary, and that white wire is going to. I think that's the collector. I forget. I'm not sure because I got it flipped upside down too. Let me just hold on. Where's that piece of paper? No, I'm sorry. The here it goes. I'm gonna just show you the diagram real quick of this. See, the base is actually that the white. So it goes to the base. The white, the white one that's on the other end of your secondary will go to the base of your emitter of your transistor. The collector is actually this yellow one, as it shows right here. And then the emitter will go off to this black wire that's actually hooked to the negative of your battery. So, uh, sorry about that. Just a nice little recap. Now I know for sure. So, collector, base, emitter, and I think that's a base too. If not, it's, it, it, if not, it's probably the emitter because it's all connected to the base of this um, transistor. So that's probably another part of a collector. So it's probably like two collectors. I'm not too sure. I'm still getting into all this um, uh, electric, the le uh, circuitry and everything and parts and stuff. So I'm learning just as much as you guys are learning. So just got to bear with me. But uh, as you can see, the light bulb is pretty bright and it is shining at 10 volts, basically 9.98 and it's using 5 watts of electricity and only half an amp. Now, I'm not too sure if that's better or not because uh, now I need to see if the this one is doing better or that one because I think this one was using, the first one I think was using less power but I don't know if it was that bright. So I'm going to have to do a video about the two differences between them. But and I probably will. That'll be like a next video. But right now I'm done with this video. And um, like I said, you guys just let me know what you think. And if you got any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. I'm going to do another video in a little bit about these light bulbs right here. Um, I got these uh, halogen bulbs I was talking about. This is kind of like a little preview off one, the ending of one video to the start of the next video. Uh, this is nice little preview. These halogen bulbs are really nice. They're very bright. Run off 12 volts of electricity already by themselves. And this one says it runs at 12 volts at 50 watts. But I have another one over here that doesn't run that many watts. And it's running at... Let me see. I don't know if you can really see it. It's really hard to see. Uh... 12 volts at 20 watts. Oh, it's really hard to see. There we go. I think you can see that now. Let me move in a little closer. There we go. See that? 12 volts at 20 watts. So there are different ones. I really think this one will probably be the best one because it doesn't use that many watts. But it probably isn't going to be as bright as the others because all the other ones are the 50 watt ones. I only got one of these 20 watt, 20 watt ones. But this one works better, I'm going to go ahead and buy a lot of these. And um, another thing about everything, uh, one other thing I had to explain to you guys was uh, the connection on here. Now, if you go buy these at a store, they don't really have any connections. Like, they have these two prongs that come out of the end of here. And on this next video, I will show you exactly how to hook these prongs up so you can actually because it's hard to solder wires onto these prongs because they're kind of slick there may be a way to solder them I don't know I tried and it just, my solder um, soldering stuff just like fell off of there like it turned you know how solder kind of turns into a liquid and the liquid just kind of ran right off of the prong and it didn't stick so um, I found a way to connect them and I will be showing you in another vid once this video starts up Alright, just stay tuned and uh, have a nice night.